The Ranrock fight is an interesting sort of fight. It is actually the last main fight in the game. And initially, you're going to think that you will be fighting Ranrock as a goblin, but it turns out you end up fighting him as a very large dragon. Uh, this was a cool sort of unexpected twist that I myself didn't expect, and it added a new level and dynamic to the fight. Um, because up to this point, you really fight a lot of humanoids, um, trolls, goblins, uh, loyalists, things like that. You don't really get to fight a lot of big mythical creatures. So this was the first time we really got to do that. And it actually made the fight a lot better and a lot more dynamic. And I really want to applaud the studio for going that direction with it. I'm going to go over sort of the fight as an overview tell you what you kind of need to know, and then at the end we'll go through a couple individual tips that will help make this fight a load easier. So when you start this fight, you'll notice that Ranrock is actually immune to damage. Uh, while he's in this glowing red sort of form that you see, you can't really do any damage to him. The way to counter that is to wait for the ancient magic orbs to pop up in the air. When you see those, they will have a color to them, red, yellow, purple. All you need to do is hit that with any spell of the corresponding school color, and that will dispel that, and you will see that after you do it, some type of thing covers Ranrock. It's either Goblin Silver or some sort of ancient magic, and he will turn from uh, red to like red with a grayish sort of silver tinge or outline to him. That's when you can actually damage him. Ranrock has three segments of his health bar those let you know sort of where he is in the fight so in the first segment you'll only have to damage one of the orbs and then you'll be able to damage him in the second one you'll have to do two and in the third one you'll have to do three and then subsequently four as you get into the second phase of the fight so mainly anytime you see him go from silver to red know that you're going to have to damage an orb in order to damage him again and you'll just have to rinse and repeat this process until he's dead it's one of the, the basic core mechanics of the entire fight. For the beginning phases of the fight, what we're going to call uh, Ranrock Phase 1, he actually has several different attacks that he uses during this phase. Um, he has two separate uh, breath attacks. One is a sort of sideways swipe that will sort of follow you or start in the direction where you are and then follow the direction that you uh, start moving. This one is completely unblockable. You can't do anything with this attack. The best thing to do when this attack happens is to run at it and then dash through it and dash to the other side. That way the attack just goes on past you. If you try to outrun it, um, it speeds up until it hits you. So just always dash past this attack. Don't, don't do anything with it. The second version of this, he shoots a straight line through the ground and it will cut a piece of the ground out and you can actually grab that and throw it back at him. Um, if you are very good with your timing, you should go ahead and try to do that. But just know a lot of times he'll follow that up with another attack and you'll be hit while you're caught in the animation of catching and then throwing. So just kind of learn the timing on this. I personally didn't really use it very much um, because I, I didn't think it was worth the, the risk. But you yourself uh, might be a little bit better with it and you might want to go ahead and throw those every time. Ranrock does have two types of ball breath attacks. One of them is a solid larger ball. Uh, this one, you can pretango and then counter with the stupefy to get a little bit of damage on him. Uh, the problem here is if you miss, you're going to take a lot of damage, and there's a chance he's going to follow up with another attack while you're in this animation. Um, so for this attack, I would ride it off unless you're very, very good, um, because the damage really isn't worth it. The second one is a cluster of three sort of red rocks that he shoots at you. This is the one you want to pay attention to. This is when you can throw back at him and do good massive spike damage. Um, I would also, after you throw this back at him, follow up with a couple damage spells, either uh, any of your big hits, Bombarda, the cut spell, any of that. Just follow up with a couple real quick. This will let you spike out some damage um, and move right on and just sort of get into like a comfortable rotation with the boss fight. The last main attack that you're really going to see a lot is... Uh, the, the AoE that he does. And this AoE, um, you can't really do anything with it. You can't dash past it. The best thing to do is watch the ground as it's coming towards you. And as the bubble gets close to you, just go ahead and cast Pertango. Uh, his bubble will hit your bubble. They'll cancel out. You'll come out of it. No damage. Uh, the worst thing you can do is cast either too early or too late. Obviously, if it's too late, you're going to take damage. And if you cast too early, you're going to take damage. So just kind of watch the ground get the timing down. 
And that's how I would deal with that. Phase two is a lot like phase one, except now uh, Ranrock is on the ground and he's moving around. So you don't have a stationary spot to focus. You do have to sort of reposition and do a little bit more movement. He will run at you. So when he runs at you, you need to be aware of this and you just want to dash away from him um, and then just keep keep moving away from him. He's got a very large hitbox and you would be surprised how far away from him you will still get clipped. So just keep that in mind and then continue to do uh, what you have been doing up to this point, popping ancient magics while they're in the air, dashing away from him, avoiding the breath attacks and throwing back the items he cuts from the ground or his, his breath attack and uh, just rinse and repeat and this fight will be over before you know it. So my first tip, would be carry your 25 wiggle potions. You can carry up to 25. So before you start this final mission, bring 25, you're gonna use them. If you have the three unforgivable curses, use them on the way up to here so you're not burning a lot of potions. You will use a lot of potions in here just because each attack will get your health so low that you almost have to heal after every time you get hit. Save your ancient magic meter uses or your ancient magic attacks for the final phase. Wait to use them until Ranrock is on the ground. You might be inclined to use them early, thinking that you will be able to rebuild your magic meter. You won't. You will try to rebuild your magic meter, but what's going to happen is you're going to take a lot of damage doing it, and it's, it's not worth it. Come into the fight knowing that if you have two, three, four, or five charges, that's all you're going to have. Save them for the last part of the fight, which is the hardest and use them to chunk down his health all in one go right at the end of the fight. This will make your experience 10 times easier. Bring potions. You've had the ability to brew potions the entire game, and like most people, you probably haven't really used them because there just hasn't been a good reason to. This fight is a great reason to bring potions. You can bring the Endurance Potion, which really beefs up your defense. It's gonna help in some of the later stages of the fight. Um, when you're getting low on Wiggle Potions and or the, the Wigan Weld Potions and you are starting to take a lot of damage and, and you just want to help, you know, not die instantly. Also bring uh, Focus Potions. These are nice uh, to reduce the cooldowns of your spells so you can cast a lot more of those high damage spells quicker. Um, these are great for later stages in the fight so you can really spam those spells out and capitalize on the openings that you have. And Maxima Potions are great because they uh, they definitely increase your spell damage. Um, I'm not sure if these stack with ancient magic, but even if not, they're going to help with everything else. Um, and they're going to help you pump out that damage to make this fight 10 times easier. We talked about the small attacks earlier. Um, I would avoid them. They're nice. They're 20, 30 damage here and there. And they, and they, they do help with some ancient magic generation, but the amount of, of hits you're going to have to, to put out versus uh, the amount of ancient magic you're going to get back is very minimal. And you're probably, maybe if you're lucky, going to be able to refill one Ancient Magic bar uh, through the entire fight. And if you're doing what our previous tip was, which is holding your Ancient Magic until the end, that's not going to matter anyway. So do yourself a favor. Don't get caught locked in an animation. Just, just don't bother casting them. Use the time for map awareness and to pay attention to the uh, combat mechanics and really just get a feel for the whole fight in general. And just avoid small attacks. Use your damage spells, your big hitters, uh, either after you send a counter at Ranrock or after you uh, sort of uh, block his big AoE spell. These are great times where you can get sometimes three and four spells off in a row and, and really pour out the damage. So I would really watch for windows of opportunity to pour on damage and don't just try to slowly pick the damage out um, throughout the entire fight. What you'll find is you're getting hit more times than you need to and it's best uh, to just wait and do large spikes. So throwing the stones back at uh, Rancor can be a little bit buggy. I had issues with it, especially in the final fight. He would rear up, I would wait to see the stone, I would try to grab it out of the air. Next thing I know, the stone would hit me and I, I was unsure what happened. So what I can say is, as soon as you see him rear up to throw the stone, just go ahead and hold the button to throw it. As soon as he rears up, that way as soon as the stone pops up, you're already grabbing it out of the air, you can turn around, you can throw it at him. There's no chance to miss it. This was what really helped me with the final phase of the fight and something that will hopefully help you so you don't feel like you're constantly missing that rock. Um, so try that and see if it helps you uh, in the fight. The last real tip is don't try, and I, I think I mentioned it before, but don't try to outrun the breath attacks. Just, just dodge through them uh, and, and continue to run past them that way. If you try to run, like outrun it, 
it will catch up to you. It will hit you and it will hurt. So definitely try to dodge past them and don't try to outrun them. And the last major tip I have is grab the talent that lets you have sort of the sonic roll instead of the, the small dash. This roll will save your life. It gives you such a large dashing distance that it really makes repositioning around the map 10 times easier. And all you really have to do is hold your dash button in instead of tapping it. And you can clear a sizable portion of the map. This will help if you misread an attack and you need to get out of there quick, or you uh, did not see sort of the run coming at you, or maybe he changed position or something like that. So definitely pick that talent up. If you have even one spare talent point sitting around before the fight, that will make your life 10 times easier. This was definitely one of the better fights in the game, and I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope these tips help. Hopefully these tips help make your, uh, your experience in the fight a little bit more enjoyable.